Um, they've handled you know, most of everything we've done recruiting-wise. I think Lou Holt said best, uh, you want to be a great motivator, surround yourself with motivated people. And uh, I've, got, I've been fortunate enough to do that because these guys show up to work every day. You don't have to tell them what to do. They know what to do, and they know what our guys need to get better every day. So I am blessed with that. Um, they've handled you know, most of everything we've done recruiting-wise. I think Lou Holt said best, uh, you want to be a great motivator, surround yourself with motivated people. And uh, I've, got, I've been fortunate enough to do that because these guys show up to work every day. You don't have to tell them what to do. They know what to do, and they know what our guys need to get better every day. So I am blessed with that. Uh, I do want to take the, uh, just the opportunity. I kind of called and I begged Jeff. I said, listen, I want to get in front of Rover, okay? And because uh, I, I think any time we can get in front of people and talk about our program, uh, because we're excited about our program. We're excited of what our guys, what they've done in the past and what we believe we're going to continue to do in the future. Uh, this year when I took over, uh, we were able to bring in uh, 45 players in the fall, okay, and that's, we're still at 45. Uh, that's the biggest team we've ever brought in here. And uh, so, but like I said, with that bringing in 45, you know, sometimes you run in that situation where you bring in that many, seven or eight quit you, you have to cut two or three, and before you look up, you're down to about 35. Uh, we have not cut anybody. Uh, we did have one young man that actually uh, decided not to play anymore in the fall, but we brought in another guy in the spring. So we stayed at 45, and I think that kind of goes back to uh, when we got coaches, we were able to get out and find the type of players that fit our program, then we're able to keep them in our program. And, uh, and then that, that way we don't have to worry about cutting players. You know, you put time and money and you build a relationship with these guys, the last thing you want to do is bring them in and get rid of them. And uh, so we spent a lot of time making sure we get to know who our players are, know their background, know their family, know their situation. And the most part, they're going to fit what we're trying to do. And I think we've been fortunate enough to do that, and that's allowed us to be able to keep our guys on staff. Uh, with those 45 guys, we had a 3.05 GPA in the fall. Uh, we had 31 out of 45 that finished with a 3.0 or better in the fall. And, you know, so that's, that kind of shows you what type of young men we're bringing in. Uh, obviously, they're talented enough or they probably wouldn't be here. But in the meantime, they're also doing what they need to do in the classroom. Uh, two of those 31 actually had a 4.0, and then we had one young man actually graduate. And uh, he finished his degree in four and a half years. This is his senior year in baseball, so he's, just taking, uh, he's actually taking 12 hours of history to pick up a history minor. So we, you know, we're, we're pleased to announce that anytime we get a chance. We buy them little cheesy t-shirts. They cost us about three or four dollars to buy them. They love them for some reason. It just says, go big blue across it on the back in a real big block cheap looking letter and says 3.0 club and uh, those guys wear those things around town to class and I like it and they like it because it shows the hard work they put in the classroom and it lets everybody else on campus uh, get a chance to see uh, what we're about what the guys are doing but uh, what I want to talk about is obviously the, the question we get hit with all the time is how's life after Hayden Simpson and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, I don't know, ask me in May, I'll let you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, obviously Hayden is, uh, he's a tough guy to replace. There's a, there's a lot of programs that would not be able to replace a Hayden Simpson. You know, when you're talking about the 16th pick overall, uh, first round draft, there's a lot of programs that never get to uh, witness that. I don't know whoever as a coaching staff will be able to witness that again. I don't know. I hope so. But, you know, there's, there's people that have coached a lot of years that never had the opportunity to say they coached a first round uh, player. And then to be able to do it, <coughs> excuse me, in the town where he was born and raised, and I think it adds a little, yeah, it makes it a little more special. But, uh, you know, returning player-wise, we're looking at returning uh, starting catcher. Uh, Logan Williams, who was our starting first baseman last year, was honorable mention All-American, uh, hit 380 with 15 home runs for us. Uh, actually, the preseason All-American, he's back. We've moved him to third. Uh, Pat Johnson, who was an honorable mention All-American last year, preseason All-American this year, he's back in the outfield. Uh, we return our starting center fielder, uh, and, and, then all, and then also return two other outfielders that have shared starting time. So we're actually four starters back in the outfield with the addition of uh, local uh, Trevor Rogers, okay, transferred down from Missouri State. Uh, he's had a great fall for us, actually probably been our best and most consistent hitter since we've come back this spring. Uh, so obviously he's, you know, he's going to be a huge impact player for us. And then uh, we had two Division I transfers, our shortstop. Uh, Trey Buck is from Kansas State, and he is what our program's about. If you guys have ever had a chance to watch us, and you've seen how our guys get on and off the field and the way they play, and at the end of the day, their uniforms are always dirty, that's Trey Buck. 
Now he's only about five seven five eight, but don't let size fool you because he's pound for pound. He's a, he's a 300 bencher. He's a 500 squatter, uh, and then he just knows how to play the game. Like there, there's not a day that goes by that he's not dirty. And as a coach, you love to have that, especially at the shortstop position. Uh, first baseman transferred from Kansas State as well. Uh, David Alday was an All-American at Texas County Junior College. Went to Kansas State, actually blew out his knee last year. Transferred back here. I said we're, uh, he'll be our 3-0 hitter, and we're looking for great things from him. So, you know, position player-wise, things are, we had a lot returning, and then we were able to fill in the few holes that we lost last year. So we're looking good there. You know, pitching-wise, it's a whole new staff. We had five pitchers last year, obviously, that got a chance to go on and play professional baseball. So, you know, we're still trying to learn. You know, really, our pitchers, we may not know exactly what we have until the other fellow uniform steps out there. You know, we do have Dan Green back with our Game 3 conference starter last year. He's back. He's getting some interest from the professional scouts. You know, he's a 6'6", 200, you know, actually 190-pound kid from Michigan. Uh, he throws 88, 92, 93 miles per hour. Uh, you know, we're looking for great things from him. And then Brian Dixon, who was a re uh, returning pitcher for us last year, those two guys are looking at being our number one, number two right now. And then the rest were just, like I said, we don't really know. We've had some guys that have done some really good jobs in the fall. And then since we've been back this spring, but like we said, until we get them out there, you never know about guys. So I know this, our pitching depth is probably a little deeper than what we've had the past couple of years. Are we going to run out five draft picks like last year? I don't know. But... I'm not concerned with that. I'm concerned about what are they going to do to help our program win. And I know that we've got some winners out there. So we're excited about what we have returning <coughs> and what we're about to go to. We start, our season starts on Tuesday. Uh, barring any snow, rain, any, you know, anything else, we're, yeah. actually, uh, we're actually trying to scramble around to see if we can't find a game for Sunday. A lot of teams have already started canceling because of the weather up north. A lot of teams up north are trying to come down. So we're actually been on the phone all morning, and when I leave here, we'll call some more coaches to try to just find someone that might want to play a Saturday, or Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon game. You know, just try to get going. Uh, but we do open up Tuesday, February 8th, and then we're at home next weekend for our first uh, home series. Okay? Um, these guys are not only part of what we have now, but let's talk about our signing class. That's always a big thing. I know football just had theirs yesterday. They had a great signing class for the upcoming year. But we have an early signing period in the fall. Uh, we were able to sign 11 young men in the fall, which is our biggest fall signing class we've ever had here also. And like I said, it goes back to these two guys. They spent their wife and their girlfriends were probably not, I was not their favorite person in the fall because they stayed. I had Justin fly out to Arizona. Uh, they spent a lot of time in East Texas, South Texas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Kansas, Mississippi. These two guys stayed on the road, okay, and it paid off for us. We're, we were able to sign four left-handed pitchers in the fall, uh, two being the high school rank, one right down the road at Parker's Chapel. Uh, Travis Stanley, which actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken, used to live in Magnolia. Travis struck out 130 batters in 80 innings last year in high school baseball, uh, looking for great things this year and his senior year at Parker's Chapel. Signed a 6'6 kid, uh, freshman kid that's probably not even shaving yet. Uh, that we're looking at, he's already folks in upper 80s. You know, he's already 88, 89, and like I said, he ain't got a whisker on his face. So we're, we're looking for great things when he gets here because maturity is still right around the corner. And uh, two junior college left-handed pitchers that bring in the experience and the knowledge and the wealth and, you know, have already played in two years of college baseball. Uh, we signed two outfielders that kind of fit our mold. They're short, but they can really run. And uh, you guys have ever seen us play, we like to have speed in the outfield. These guys are that type. They can bunt, they can move the ball around, and then they, the ball goes up in the air, it's going to get caught. And uh, that, gives us, that gives us an advantage and makes our pitcher be able to concentrate and know that if I give up, so what if I miss right here? It goes in the air, these guys are going to catch it. And then we signed a big, strong catcher, and we signed a third baseman that's really going to be able to hit. So our signing class in the fall, I said, is the best we've ever had. We're excited about that, and we're excited about what we'll be able to add on this coming spring when the spring signing class starts back up. And it's a never-ending battle for these guys. Uh, it doesn't end because we just finished the fall, and they're already looking at hitting the road this weekend to go watch junior college baseball. And it's just one of those things we get about a month break, kind of signing dates in November. We kind of take December off, maybe January, and then hit the road again. And uh, but that's, you know, we feel like we've got to do that. We want to keep this program where it's been and be able to take it to new heights. So we're excited about that. You know, uh, former players, I love to talk about them. 
Right now we've got 10 former players playing professional baseball. Uh, Skylar Strumsmo, who's made it as high as AAA with the Giants. Skylar played here 07, finished playing here 07, still hanging around, bouncing around minor league baseball. Uh, we got Aaron Terry, James Schrader, who played here just two years ago, or actually 09, they're still playing. Of course, we had all of our guys were drafted last year with uh, Chad Inger, Chris Marshall, who are both with the um, Indians organization. Matt Speak, who's with the, um, I'm sorry, uh, those two guys are with the Angels. Matt Speak with the Indians. You got Andrew Winnington, who got our shortstop last year, who got drafted by the Diamondbacks. Uh, he got released, actually, uh, because he had some back problems. He's trying to get picked back up right now by a couple of teams. We've got some people interested in him. Uh, you got Cannon Lester, you know, from El Dorado, the same thing, got picked up by the Giants last year. Uh, ended up getting released because of arm problems. He had surgery. And I'll tell you this, I wish we had him back for another year because he's throwing better than he's ever thrown before. And it actually, the arm problem that he had kind of limited his hitting, which is hard to believe because the guy basically set every career record here you could possibly do hitting-wise. And uh, but the Giants have talked to him, and he's waiting to hear back from them any minute, any day. Uh, but I think they're going to bring him back out to spring training. So that's good for him. And then, of course, we got Hayden Simpson, and, uh, who's leaving. He reports to big league spring training uh, at the end of this month. Uh, and when I say that, he gets to be with the big leaguers. You know, when he gets a report out there, uh, just part of the process, you know, when you're that high of a draft pick, and they're going to put you out there with the guys, and he's going to get to work one-on-one -on -one and be side-by-side -side with professional baseball players. You know, does that mean he'll be in the big leagues this year? No, you know, obviously probably not, but he's going to get that opportunity to work with. So he'll be leaving here. Actually, I think he's leaving next week. He's going to go on out there a couple weeks early. You guys know he, he battled through mono. Uh, hit him pretty hard. And he still, he lost about 15 to 20 pounds. And you guys know Hayden, he don't have 15 to 20 pounds to give up. And uh, so we're excited for him. He's ready to get going because really he didn't get, you know, he hasn't got his feet weight yet in minor league baseball. You know, they're ready to get him out there and get going. Uh, but those guys are still playing. All right? And it's, it's <coughs> nice to know that we still have 10 guys playing professional baseball. Uh, getting a continuing education. That's good for our program. Okay. The thing that's neat about it is most of those guys we've set here recruited. So we know we're bringing in the right type of young men. Uh, so we're excited about that. Uh, stadium, okay, I know if you guys have been by the, the, the field, you've seen what we got going on. Uh, the stadium was actually supposed to be ready uh, this weekend. They were about three or four weeks behind. Uh, they are hoping to have it completed by the end of this month. Uh, we're obviously looking forward to that. And I know this, most people call me, they don't say, what do you think about your new office? Or what do you think about the locker room your players never had? I always want to know how big those bathrooms going to be. You know, so if you guys, if you've come to our games before, you know we never had public restrooms. We had to walk to the gym. But that's our number one question. How big those bathrooms going to be? Of course, I always say, well, as long as they got one stall, you got more than we ever had. So uh, we're excited. It's, uh, <laughs> the good thing about this is neat because it's a fundraiser. I mean, we had to raise money to complete this. Of course, we had a $500,000 grant by the Walker Foundation up in you know, Northwest Arkansas that helped tremendously. But $105,000 was donated from the community as well. And that's, that's the neat thing to know about it is we had 57 people that actually joined the Good Art Society. And by doing that, you had at least donate $1,000 in Good Art's name towards the facility. And uh, so when we were able to bring in 105000 here locally, uh, that, that, I mean, I want to say thank you because there's some of you in here that donated towards that. And we thank you for that because, like I said, the facility we're getting is top-notch. As far as Division II baseball, we're going to set a top. And I'll tell you this, our facilities are going to be as nice as a lot of Division I programs. You know, so we're blessed with that. It's going to, I mean, our players have earned it. There's no doubt about that. But it's going to help us with recruiting on down the road. I'll say this, in the fall we brought in these recruits and all they had was just the frame of it up. They just got the frame and the, the recruits were overwhelmed, you know, because they're, a lot of times these kids come from these high schools, these junior colleges, they just play out in the field, out in the middle of nowhere. So we're actually, we're blessed with that. Like I said, I want to say thank you for those who donated. Uh, we will be able to name the field. It will be Steve Goodhart Field. Uh, it'll be Pat Walker Stadium at Steve Goodhart Field is, is how it's going to work. Uh, they're setting the date. They're trying to get a hold of the Walkers right now to figure out what day will work best for them. Uh, Miss Walker basically just said, I don't, I don't go anywhere when it's cold. So we're just kind of, you know, when you, when you have that kind of money and we're naming a building after them, you know, we'll, we'll wait on them. So it'll probably be sometime in April because we do want it to be warm. We want it to be special. 
and uh, we bring the walkers down, and then Coach Goodhart and like the facility will be named after him. Uh, so we appreciate that. Um, you know, one thing we're big about is we, we love getting out in the community, okay? So if there's anything that we can do, if any of you guys have an event going on, if you need a speaker, if you need a couple players to come by and talk to a class or talk to an organization, we're big about that, okay? One of the first things we did as a staff is uh, we bought, we went out and bought our players this polo shirt, okay? And that's, you know, it's, it's a little thing, but we want to be able to get them visible out in the community. We want them to look good. Uh, I know in the fall we were able to do a uh, pep rally at Westside Elementary. They were, it was, I think it was uh, Drug Free Week. They brought us in. Uh, myself and about five or six of our players went out there. We just had a pep rally. We played games. We danced. Uh, there are some blackmail pictures floating around right now of myself uh, doing the icky shove. I don't know what I was doing, uh, but I hope none of you see it. Uh, so we did that. We've, uh, we've got our Big Brother program that we've been doing now for about five or six years. We probably met about five or six times in the fall. And what that is, is we paired up our players with younger kids in the community. They come out on a Friday afternoon. They spend an hour with our guys. And really what it is, for an hour we just play. We play home run derby, they race each other, they work on ground balls, fly ball, they work on throwing. But really it's just an hour of just playing. And um, we don't really advertise that. Uh, one year we advertised it and we it basically turned into a camp. But if, if any of you have a kid or a grandkid that you would like to get involved in our Big Brother program, just shoot me an email. Because we still do have a few spots open where we've got players that don't actually have a little brother. Uh, I've seen firsthand what that means to not only our guys, but as a kid. I know Jeff, uh, his kids have been involved in it for years. As a matter of fact, Connor informed me the other night that he's actually wearing the jersey number this year of his big brother. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what it means to these kids. My five-year-old son is getting to go through it, and it, you know, he just, I don't think he really understands it because he gets to go out there every day he wants to, but I see what it does to him. He has fun, he gets to play, but the other side of it, it reminds our guys how simple this game is. Uh, it keeps them, you know, for an hour, like we tell our guys, for the next hour, the only thing you're worried about is these little guys that are out here. Let's keep it simple. Let's play the game. It reminds them how fun this game can be. Because I know it can get heated. You know, I'm not going to lie. I've gotten heated. Uh, you know, <laughs> everything's based on wins and losses. But it's nice to have look back and realize that it is a simple game. And we want to keep it fun for these guys. So that's one reason why we do the Big Brother program. Um, we had our fish fry fundraiser this past Monday at OP House. You guys that bought tickets, uh, thank you. We ended up selling over 700 and something, 750 tickets or so. OP House shut us. They told us not to sell more than 700, so I did. We just really sold about 650. But we had a little bit over 100 people that just showed up Monday night and eight. So I appreciate you know the support we get there. It's been a great thing for us. We started that thing nine years ago. Uh, actually, Coach Goodhart did it, and it's funny because the way it happened is Coach Goodhart ordered some jerseys, and he didn't have a way to pay for them. And uh, so he kind of, he went to Nan and Dwight and said, listen, I need help. Can y'all help me? Well, that's how the fundraiser started. It's become such a great community <coughs> event. Uh, it allows our players the opportunity to get around you guys and just get to know people, and that's why we've carried it on. And it is. It's a good fundraiser for us. It allows us to provide our guys with some, you know, needed equipment that we may not be able to provide them if we didn't do it. But more than anything, we like the fact that it gets our players out on a personal level. And, you know, people get to meet them. They get to, you know, talk to people, walk around. Um, Trevor Rogers was even having to wait tables and mop. So if you guys know the Rogers, they, a lot of people were ragging and asking if, he ever, if he'd ever touched a mop before. So uh, <laughs> Trevor did have to mop, uh, but it's good to get players, you know, get them involved in that type of stuff. Uh, this Saturday night, if you have a grandkid or a kid from the age of 5 to 13, we're having a parents' night out over at, 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 actually at the gym. We've got both gyms reserved, the swimming pool reserved, all the classrooms. Basically from 6 to 9, we're going to just play. We're just going to babysit. It's called Parents' Night Out. It gives you parents or grandparents a chance to go out on the town. Uh, I figured three hours is plenty in Magnolia. You'll be able to, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll be able to eat, you'll be able to go to Walmart. <laughs> I think we thought three hours was plenty. Somebody said four to five hours, but you know, it's uh, four to five hours, you can get in trouble in this town. So, um, we'll, wiffle ball, basketball, we've got four certified lifeguards on staff that will be there. Uh, indoor pool, obviously they can swim. 
We're going to have uh, probably like Sandlot and baseball movies playing in the classrooms. They just want to sit down. They're tired. But really, for three hours, we're just going to play. And uh, so if you guys have any kids that are interested in that, uh, you can go to our webpage, and there's a registration form on there. All the information's on there. I know the Banner News has run it. Uh, so if you, but if you need any more information on that, just let me know. Okay? Um, one other event we've got going on, we had some local businesses ask us about advertising at the field. You know, we've got a few advertisement spots up there, and people have always asked. We don't have the space to do anything yet, so one thing we created, we're calling it Game Day Sponsors. Okay? And the idea behind this was we're always looking for ways to buy things for our players. And I know that you know, everybody's, everybody's budgets are tough, the economy's tough right now, but obviously we bring these young men in here. We want to treat them like they're big-time athletes. You know, without spoiling them, but we want to buy them their turfs and their nice polo shirt and their spikes and their bats and their, you know, all that stuff that they need. Uh, one thing we started was game day sponsors. And the reason behind it was I just want to be able to offset the cost that it, what our game day baseballs cost us and what our bats cost us for game day. Okay? We spent $2,000 just in game balls all right, just to get us through the 23 home games we'll play. We spent about $2,000 just in our game day bats. So what we came up with is uh, our goal was to find 20 businesses or people in town that would want to donate $200 towards game day sponsors. Uh, actually, we've already got 10, and I hadn't, this is the first time I've even mentioned it to anybody in the public because people caught wind of it and they started calling. <coughs> but what that $200 does, it allows we give advertisement in our media guide, which is almost complete. It's going to be online. We also, uh, on game day, before each game, we're going to announce uh, today's game is brought to you by, oh, sorry, read off the names of the businesses. And then you guys have been to baseball the game before a lot of foul balls get hit. Okay? Every time a foul ball is hit, we'll say that foul ball is compliments of an announce of business. Well, the very next pitch might be a foul ball. That foul ball is compliments of a business. What we're going to do is buy some uh, cheaper balls. And if a little kid goes and gets a baseball, we're going to get the, the nice $5 ball back, but we're going to give him a ball in return. And uh, with that being said, we get to offset the cost. Like I said, it provided us an opportunity to be able to buy our guys polo shirts and stuff. And, uh, but it also gives some local businesses advertisement for $200. And I know that to some that's a lot. We've actually had some businesses donate more, uh, but that was what our, we set our price at. So if anybody's interested in being a game day sponsor, just let us know. I promise we're not going to turn down your money. And, uh, but I will promise you this. Every bit of it is used towards our players. You know, the fundraisers we do, this, it's, like I said, to be able to provide our guys. We had to buy three new jerseys this year. Uh, it was just one of those years where everything went wrong for us. Our jackets, they quit making that jacket, so instead of just buying our new guys the same jacket, we had to buy everybody new jackets. Our sweats, they quit making that same sweat, so we had to buy everybody new sweats. They quit making our jerseys, we had to buy all. It was just one of those years where we got hit hard, and uh, so we're just trying to offset the cost of some of that. And that was one way to do it. Um, what I did today, and I'm going to open this up because I know you guys like to get out here by one. We'll open up for questions. I did, though, I brought a Hayden Simpson autographed picture. Okay, He came over and autographed it a few minutes ago. And if anybody can tell me what Simpson's career record was here, I'll be glad to give it to you today. So anybody know what his career record at SAU was? <laughs> <laughs> it's open for anybody. Thirty-five and two. Thirty-five and two. All right. There you go, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't rigged. Well, it wasn't rigged. I promise. Uh, but Thank Simpson, you. I will say this: if you guys know Hayden, he has no problem signing autographs. Like I said, I called him this morning. He came up there straight up to autograph that. Yeah. You guys, you know, he'll be leaving in a couple weeks. There's baseball cards. You guys get on eBay. Just type in Hayden Simpson. Actually, one of them's going for $1,400 right now. Uh, but most of them, they're just selling for four, five, six dollars. But they're act they are actually autographed. He had to sit in our office this summer and sign 2,000 different cards. And uh, so, if you are looking for an autographed baseball card, official tops baseball card, you get on eBay. You can buy them for not very much. But those are on there now. They just came out. Um, but now I'm just going to open this up for if anybody has any questions. Looking forward to it. Uh, what, what, I'm, I'll get back to it. <laughs> what do you think about 
believe we don't have a conference in, for baseball. Well, for baseball. Well, for the baseball, there, it's it's twofold. Uh, I don't personally. This is me. I don't think the competition is going to be as strong as what we've been able to play in the past. Gold South Conference, I, I believe, in every sport, is probably the premier conference in the nation. I understand the reasons behind it, the economy, to be able to play teams that actually are on the same type of budgets we are. From the baseball standpoint, it's, I don't believe it's going to be as competitive. Um, I like the one thing about it is it gets us in a different region. You know, you guys, if you follow us in the past, we, we have to play in a region with the Florida schools. And no offense, because the last two years we've been the one seed in the region. But that's that region year in, year out is a bear. And uh, you know, we play in the largest region in the nation right now. You got some teams that only have to get through one or two teams to make the World Series. We're having to go through I mean, the top eight teams that go to our regional are ranked in the top 20. So it gets us in a little bit different region, which I think gives us a little bit more of an advantage to reach the World Series. So we like that, obviously. Uh, you know, the competition is not going to be as strong, but we're still going to be able to play good competition. The conference will be good. It allows us to start playing some more Texas schools that wouldn't play us in the past because we weren't in region with them now. Then we'll be able to start playing like Abilene Christian, who's always one of the top teams in the nation. We've already got them on the schedule for the next two years. So obviously we're still going to play the toughest schedule we can. And then our goal, like it is now for every year, is going to be we want to be top of the division. We want to win the conference every year. So uh, I'm excited because we like change. So we'll see where it takes us. Yes, sir. Watching talk about new specifications for bats. Is that going to affect you and slugging ability and all of that sort of thing? Do you have to change to that bat? Yes, sir. We had to change bats this year. And what they've done is basically they've thickened the wall of the bats. So the, the exit speed's not the same. I'll say this I believe that teams that do not get in the weight room or are very physical, it's going to have a tremendous impact on their team. Uh, fortunate for us, we've been lifting five days a week since August 27th. We're pretty strong, we're pretty physical. Our guys have been able to use the bats. We got them in in September. Uh, so they've gotten acquainted, they've gotten used to them. It's almost like hitting with a wood bat. If you barrel, if you hit the sweet spot with a good baseball, it still goes. But those little little big hits when you get jammed or get it off the end of the bat, those, those aren't happening anymore. And uh, your bigger, stronger guys are still gonna be okay, but your little smaller, weaker guys, there's, it's gonna affect the game tremendously. I think pitching is gonna come a little more dominant now, I think pitcher that may not be a dominating pitcher is going to have a little better stuff now because there's more room for error. You know, used to you make that great pitch, you get to jam a guy, but they're strong enough to hit it on the infield's head. I don't think that's going to happen anymore. So, but the good thing is we all had to change. I mean, everybody we play is playing with the same bats. High school is changing to it next year. You know, so it's, and I'll, really, I wouldn't be surprised in the next five years if we're forced to use wood bats, you know, the way things are starting to look. That's already tough. 